This one's been requested recently by a couple of people and if I say Drag Racer by Doug Wood then that might not ring too many bells. But if I were to say that this is the tune used by the BBC for their snooker coverage in the 80s then I'm sure that for most uh, British viewers at least you'll know what I'm talking about. And for me this is a very evocative kind of tune, it just reminds me of being a kid when the snooker always seemed to be on the telly. And uh, if you're not a British viewer, then all of this might not mean very much. But uh, regardless of that, this is a really fun track to play. It's a great instrumental. And I'm going to begin by playing through the entire tune and then I'll break it down for you. <laughs> So there we go, this is such a fun one to play. And I did try and do a little bit of research about Doug Wood. There's not that much information out there actually, but there is a short Wikipedia entry. And I did find a great little interview, which is on the BBC site, I think, where he talks about this tune. And as far as I can ascertain, this was written in the 70s by Doug Wood. And Doug Wood is actually an American composer. And this track is sometimes credited to the Doug Wood band, but uh, apparently this track is all Doug Wood. He played all of the instruments on this and then it was picked up in the early 80s I think by the BBC people and uh, they decided to use it for the snooker. Let's get into this then and the tune is made up of a series of great riffs. I'm going to be showing you how those are done and I'll also probably throw in a little bit of gentle music theory as well so I'll talk about the chord progression and the note choice and scales and that kind of thing. So let's get started. I'm going to start with the main riff and we're in the key of A major and there are two guitar parts that you can hear on the recording. There's obviously the electric lead guitar, but there's also an acoustic guitar in there as well, playing more of a strummy kind of a part and outlining the basic chords. So on my backing track, I just had an acoustic guitar strumming away in the background. And during the main riff, the acoustic guitar is just doing something like this. <laughs> So we've got the A major and then G, D and then A. And what the lead guitar is doing at that point is this. So we've got this riff played in the fifth position. We've got this droning open A string. And I'm hammering on from 5 to 7 on the D string. Now I'm doing that hammer on move twice. And then I'm 
just strumming the A in this A note, an octave higher at the seventh fret. And the important thing here is getting the rhythm right. And the overall feel of this track has got a kind of 16th note subdivision. So one, two, three, four. So for a lot of this tune, I'm just keeping my strumming hand moving up and down in that 16th note kind of a rhythm and you can hear that there are some accents in there that you want to bring out so it's ba 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 bo ba ba and then in between those main accents you've got some kind of in between notes some almost ghost notes if you like and those just happen automatically if you're moving your strumming hand in that 16th note kind of a way <laughs> So then we've got the chord hits. So it's G, D, A, and most of the time I'm just hearing power chords. So I'm playing my G chord like this, a bar chord at the third fret, but I'm emphasizing the lower notes in that chord most of the time. So, and then the same thing goes with the D chord. I'm holding down a full D chord, but I'm really just playing the lowest couple of notes in that chord got that A chord, I was playing that with one finger at the second fret. So if I put that together with the first bit of the riff you've got. So we play that three times, I think then we've got the next little riff which goes like this. Nice little descending riff and underneath that the chords are going like this I think. So we're going to an E chord, C, G and then we've got F, B flat and then E or E7. So quite interesting how the chords move at this section of the tune and the lead guitar really just descending and hitting the root notes of each of those chords. So we're starting on this E note at the second fret on the D string, just coming down chromatically to the open D, hitting this C note, this is the third fret on the fifth string, and then continuing down, three, two, open, and then hitting this G note at the third fret on the low E string. Then we've got just some more power chord stuff. So I'm just playing an F, B flat, and then an E power chord. So this is maybe the most technically difficult part of this tune. It's played quite fast. You're going to need to have good picking technique. I mean, you don't need to be a shredder, but you're going to need to have fairly decent picking technique to play this at the tempo of the recording. So uh, if you're finding that difficult, I think the only way to proceed is just to take it really slowly, just be accurate and gradually build up the speed. On to the next riff. This time we're ascending and we're playing this over the main chord, so the A, G, D chord progression. And this is really based on the A major pentatonic scale, I think. So we're leading into the riff with just open low E and hammering onto the second fret, and then over onto the fifth string, open second, open, and then back to this F sharp, and then this. And this is quite a common, it's almost a stock kind of a country phrase, this one, it's that. Um, it's often played in the key of G. And I think bluegrass players would refer to that as a, a G run, so it's quite a common country-ish sounding phrase. So we're starting on the A. A little chromatic run of notes, so two, three, four. Two to four on the D string, and then 
hitting this high A. We've got a little bend at the fourth fret on the G. And then coming down to this F sharp. And as I say, all of this is really A major pentatonic, or if you include that extra chromatic note, I think that's sometimes referred to as the bluegrass scale so you might like to think about your a major pentatonic scale position here so this one and then we've got the g d a chord hits again and in this section of the tune it sounds like he's playing it slightly differently so i'm just playing triads on the second third and fourth strings so i'm playing G triad here, it's five, four, three. And then instead of playing the D chord like this, I'm playing the triad like this. So strings four, two, and three. And you can hear that F sharp quite strongly on the recording. And then coming down to an A triad at the second fret. So, so I'm doing that in this section of the tune. I'm not doing that during the main riff. I'm just playing that I mean both, both of those things will work but this is how I think it is on the recording next riff is this high hammer-on idea so the concept of this is pretty simple I think we just got five to seven hammer-on on the B string and then we're hitting this high A note, 5th fret on the top string, and we're just repeating that group of three notes. And then coming out of the lick like that. I think the only tricky thing about this is the timing and keeping track of where the beat is, because we've got this group of three notes, but it's not a triplet rhythm, it's an 8th note rhythm so it's kind of going against the the beat of the tune you've got um i don't think polyrhythm is quite the right word but you've got the the eighth notes and then the group of three kind of going against one another so you've got to just keep track of where you are in the beat one two three four one two three four it's actually easier when you're playing it in context and you've got the backing track or you're playing along to the record. Then we're moving up a bit higher with this riff. So this is more A major pentatonic and this time we're in kind of the, the C position of the A major pentatonic scale. So you might like to think about your, your chord shape and your scale shape as well. If you've not seen my recent video on major caged ideas like i'll go into these ideas in a bit more detail in that video so you might like to, to check that out but that's how i think about a lot of this stuff is around octave shapes and around chord shapes so the actual riff goes like this so it's another quite common country idea so i'm bending uh, this 12th fret on the b string and then i'm catching the 12th fret on the top string and then coming out of the bend nice country-ish idea and then over onto the G so that 9 to 11 hammer and then back onto the B and then a little variation on the same lick really so all based on the same kind of notes so bending twice at the 12th fret all of that together and just sliding off of that last note then we're repeating some of the riffs that we've had previously so we've got the descending riff again and then the ascending riff and then we've got this section vamping on an E chord really so I'm just holding down an E major chord and I'm occasionally just lifting up my second and third fingers and hammering down a little bit of 
par muting as well. Mostly I think I'm hearing the lowest two or three strings in that, uh, in that chord. <laughs> Just keeping your strumming hand moving in that 16th note rhythm and I think we've got six bars worth of that riff. The idea. I'm not going to play all six bars now. And that's pretty much it I think as far as the basic riffs go. We then go round again all of that is repeated in exactly the same way and then for the last section of the tune we've got a third repeat but it's slightly abbreviated I think so we've got the main riff just twice. <laughs> Ending bit and the ascending bit and then we go straight to the E riff for the ending and the ending goes like this Just that E riff and we're ending with an A to that D triad that we had before and then back to A. Let me give you a brief rig rundown of the gear that I'm using in this video. Uh, I've no idea what Doug Wood used on this original recording and reading up on it it appears that the recording was uh, quite a DIY kind of affair. He did it all himself on a four track tape machine. Um, but having said that, it does sound really good, and in particular the guitar tones are amazing. So it would be interested to know exactly what he used, but it sounds like humbuckers to me. So I've gone for my Les Paul today, and that's going into my Fender Princeton. And that's pretty much it. No effects pedals today whatsoever, thanks very much. And it is a beautiful sound, I think, just a guitar with humbuckers going into a nice valve amp that's turned up until it just starts to break up. And I don't know of any pedals that can quite replicate that kind of sound. It really is quite a, a beautiful thing. That's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making this one and I do really like these old TV theme tunes and maybe I should make this a bit of a series and do some other guitar centric TV theme tunes. I think I have done one TV theme tune previously and that's the Joan 90 theme which is fantastic. That's quite an old lesson. If you've not seen that you might like to check that out but if you've got any more ideas for cool TV theme tunes let me know and I might do one or two more in the future. Thanks a lot for watching. If you want tab and a backing track for this one, both of those things are going to be up on my Patreon page. I'll see you next time.